In this video, you're going to learn how to create this college football expected value betting model just in time for week zero 2023 college football season. Hello everyone, this is Jonathan with Excel Help Now. We're going to talk through how this model works, what the inputs are, and then we'll get into actually creating it ourselves. So the model will take a sharp sports betting book, Pinnacle in this case, and take the matchups, the spread, the money line, the total, input those lines that are offered right now, these blue input cells here. And then from there, we will calculate what the big percentage is for each one of the lines. So these, will all, these totals will all equal over 100% for the matchups because Pinnacle and any sports book is going to have the big, the way that they make money on lines by having the probabilities total greater than 100%. So what we need to do is we need to take out the VIG to get an applied percentage for both the spread, money line, and total. And so the model does that for us. And then we will convert those implied percentages to American odds. And so that's what the columns here are. And what these odds will be are break-even points. So if any of the lines offered by sportsbooks for any of these matchups and wager types are longer than the odds off the implied odds here then that is a positive expected value bet and we will want to place that and then the model will go into applying the kelly criteria based on your account value and the kelly adjustment factor that you decide on how much money to offer to wager on that specific wager based on what its implied value is so this is a really comprehensive model that you can use for any sport, but this is going to walk through specifically college football and I already have week zero 2023 matchups and lines in the model. And we can use that and walk through some examples as well. So I hope you find this really valuable and we'll dive into it. Okay, so we have a blank model here. I removed all the formulas and logic. And the first part of our input is going to be getting the odds from Pinnacle, a sharp sports book. You can use whatever you want, but in this example, we're gonna use Pinnacle as they offer tight lines to allow us to back into the implied odds um, the most accurate as possible. And so we'll hop over to, to Pinnacle.com, input the matchups and the different spread, money line, and over under lines. All right, so we are over at Pinnacle.com. I have the football NCAA pulled up here, and this is week zero matchups with the spread money line and over under odds listed here and if this is your first time on pinnacle make sure you go up here to this toggle and select american odds the default is going to be decimal odds so if the odds look funny to you you can just select that toggle to american odds and everything should look uh, what you're used to just one note here is the spread and over under it'll have the the value so plus 20 and a half minus 20 and a half. If you want to change that based on what the sports books offer in a different line than that, you just click this plus and down arrow, and then you can select the, the line that's offered on a sports book you're looking at, and you can see the odds. So that's how to adjust for spreads and totals. And we'll just take these, we'll drop them into our model, and this will be the basis of backing into what our break even odds are for each one of the, the matchups and wager types. Pinnacle odds have been put into the model. The next step is to find the probability percentages with the VIG included. So we have VIG spread, money line, and total columns here, G through I. And so the formula for that is going to be if D10 is less than zero, then we're going to take the absolute value of D10 divided by the absolute value of D10 plus 100. If not, then we'll take 100 divided by D10 plus 100. So that formula will be the same for all of the big columns here. So you can just copy that down, control C, alt E, S, F to paste the formulas. And so we have that completed. Now, 50.2 and 53.5. So this is a good example of the Notre Dame Navy handicap line. So that total of that is 103.7%. So that 3.7% that is above 100, that is the big. And so we want to remove that. And so I have columns here, J through L, and this is going to be our implied percentages where we're going to, to remove the VIG to know what the true probability percentages are. So in order to do that, you'll take G10 divided by the sum of 
G10 and G11. So you want to capture the the entire both sides of the the matchup. And then if we just copy that down, we are actually going to want to copy the formula down. And then we just need to reference the G10 through G11 again. It's going to just copy down 11 and 12. We want G10 through 11. So this total 48.4 and 51.6, that equals the 100%. So that formula, we can just copy down in pairs each one of our lines to grab the correct cells. And then you can do the Control C, Alt ESF to bring it over to the money line and total column. So I'm total 700%. We have 14 lines, seven matchups. So that all matches up. So every one of these matchups is going to total 100% for the probabilities. And so that is how do you calculate the VIG percentage? And then how do we remove it to get to the implied percentage without VIG included? The next step is going to move over to these implied odds spread, implied odds money line, implied odds total columns. And this is just, we're gonna convert our probability percentages into American odds. And so the, the formula for that is going to be if J10, 48.4% is less than 0.5, then we're gonna take 100 times one minus J10 divided by J10. If not, we'll take minus 100 times J10 divided by one minus J10, close parentheses. So we'll copy that formula down and across. So now we have the American odds. These are our break-even odds. So if you have any bet opportunity that is longer odds than a 106, so 110 plus 110 plus 120, any sports book that's offering odds for Navy to cover the spread, then you'd want to take that bet. That is a positive expected value bet. So that's how to read these. So the minus 106, anything that's minus 105 or longer, you'd want to take the Notre Dame side of the spread. And the same goes for the, the money line and the total column here. The final section of our table is going to be the width column here. So I'll copy in the formula for that. And so that's going to be the absolute value of the absolute value of E10 minus the absolute value of E11. And then the other side of the pair is going to be the exact same. So absolute value of the absolute value of E11 minus the absolute value of E10. So if we just take that and copy that down for each one of our matchups, and I'm only doing this on the money line column because what this is doing is capturing the, the market width of these money line odds. So you can see the Navy Notre Dame large disparity and the favorite Notre Dame versus the underdog Navy, 671 points. So a good rule of thumb is I would say anything under 50 for width for money line is a is kind of a benchmark to use. So even though this is 7,000, 7,000, you'll most likely be able to get odds that are above plus 2352 for San Jose State. It's such a large variance in the the wager that it's it's not a positive expected value. So I would say keep your market width under 50 for money line. So UTEP, Jacksonville State, this is a pretty tight line. Same with Ohio and San Diego State. So Pinnacle's pretty confident in those money line odds, the, the ones that are 400, 700, even 118. Uh, Pinnacle is less sure, and so their odds are less reliable. And so as a sharp sports better, we want to just exclude those. So we're not placing bets, even though maybe the math says it's positive expectancy. The reality is the, our basis that we're calculating the expected value on pinnacle in this instance, isn't confident. So we don't want to rely on that data. So that's how to use the width section for just money lines spreads and over unders. Those are going to be tight lines. We don't need to even calculate the width because we can take those since those are a um, lot less variable. We have our table set up. Now we get into the fun part of actually finding some bets to, to place and analyze. So let's jump over to, to Pinnacle again and just update our, our money line odds. 
as an example, just to see, because these lines move all the time. So this is something once you get the, the matchup set up, it's pretty quickly just to type in the new odds because you know the lines move throughout the day, throughout the week. So you can constantly be updating this to find new opportunities. So let's hop over to Pinnacle. Let's put in some new odds and then we'll go to bettingusa.com and that shows all the different odds. These are completely free platforms to see if there's any lines right now that we can place bets on that are positive expected value. I have Pinnacle pulled up again. And so our UTEP Jacksonville State line moved quite a bit. So now it's minus 101, minus 113. So we can plug that back into the model and I can show you how we have a positive expected value bet on this money line right now. I plugged in the minus 101, minus 113 for the money line on the UTEP Jacksonville State game. And so our break-even odds now are plus 106 on UTEP and minus 106 on Jacksonville State. And we'll check our width here, it's 12. So that's what, under that 50 benchmark that we had. So now we'll go over to Betting USA to see if there's any sports books that are offering, offering longer odds than plus 106 and minus 106. I'm on bettingusa.com and I'm on Iowa because that's the state I'm in. And here is our UTEP Jacksonville state line, points bet, bet MGM, Caesar, DraftKings, FanDuel, Bet Rivers. And so you can see this minus 104 is getting offered right now on FanDuel for the Jacksonville State on the money line. So that is a positive expected value bet. We'll use that as our example. We'll plug it into the model and see how much, based on the Kelly criteria, we should bet on this current odd of minus 104. So I'm back at the model. I went ahead and plugged in some details for that money line. So 826 is the date of the matchup. Jacksonville State, League NCAA. Sport football, bet type, money line, sports book, FanDuel, and the odds offer minus 104. And then if we go over to the Kelly criteria box, uh, we'll say our account value is a thousand with a Kelly adjustment factor of 0.5. So those are all pretty straightforward inputs. And then the rest of this Kelly criteria calculations and our actual wager amount, that's all based on the Kelly criteria formula. So the first thing we can do is convert the odds offered, the minus 104, to decimal odds. So I have that formula here. If H7 is less than zero, then one minus 100 divided by H7. Otherwise, one plus H7 divided by 100. So 1.96 is our decimal odds. Then the implied win percentage, 51.4. That comes from our, our table, the implied money line table, 51.4. So that's the, the Jacksonville State. Money line odd 51.4. I just have a index match formula just to grab that specific cell, but you could just reference it or type it in 51.4, but that's where that comes from, the implied one percentage. And then the expected value is basically taking the odds offered divided by the, the win percentage, the implied one percentage. And so the formula there is, you know, I have it here. You can copy that in if you want to do this yourself. I won't read through all of it, but that's the expected value percent. And then the bet size is going to take our count value, the Kelly adjustment factor, the implied win percentage, and the decimal odds to get $3.84. And you can also have, um, as a percent of bankroll as well, I have that formula here. So those are all. that's all the math behind it, the 3.84, same math as this. And so $3.84 based on this. So I'll just move this odd a little bit just so you can see how the wager amount will change if the odds become more favorable. So let's say that now becomes plus 110. So 35.68, 7.85% expected value, 3.57% of our bankroll. So if we make the odds much longer to 110, you can see we should wager more. And then let's say we go minus 105. So less favorable odds, so $1.41. And then let's say we make that minus 110. So now it's no bet. You can see the expected value is now negative. So we obviously should not place that bet. But wanna, I'll put it back to the 104 that we had, we saw from Betting USA. So that is how to use this model. That is how to find positive expected value bets. It is a little cumbersome to get started, but once you have the matchup set up, it's pretty easy throughout the day or week to update the different lines and then just to see what different sports books are offering and see if there is a positive expected value. So this isn't 
this isn't easy betting, but this is how you make money in the long run with sports betting is to find only positive expected value bets, place the appropriate amount based on the Kelly criteria. And if you place enough of these bets throughout the college football season, you should end up at the end of the season profitable. This is something I've used all last year and um, had really success with it. And so I hope that you found this valuable. If you did, please like and subscribe to the channel. I'll have a lot more Excel related tips and tricks as along with a lot of sports betting specific models and dashboards that, that I think are really helpful um, to make sure that you make money in the long run with sports betting. I do have a link in the description to this exact model on my Etsy page, along with a bet tracker and a dashboard interface. So you can slice not only college football, but basketball, baseball, whatever sport you like to, to bet on and have a, a really helpful interface just to track your, your bets by sports book, by month, by odd splits. So just wanted to shout out to that and thank you and God bless.